stat counter is a way that we assess who is visiting our site. Um, and this just shows from April 7th to April 21st that we had 934 page loads. Um, this shows, um, I went in on April 2nd and we have something like 40,000 or, or 41,000 people that have basically visited that site. Just before I came, I looked at it again, it was 42,000. So that gives you an idea. And you have to be careful when you access a website because with the tools that are available free, the person who runs the website can tell who visited the website. And so here, uh, as you can see, there was uh, Dr. Kip on, um, from Brisbane. Uh, on April 3rd, and from Wellington on April 3rd, and also from France, and, and there were some, some others. But I just show you this to show you that I know whether you're paying a visit to my website. My website. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I already made mention of this. If you have watermarked pictures on there, not only do you protect your sources, but it also uh, is figured in when. Google searches, or when somebody searches that recycle. Okay, so this is just in some pertinent keywords, pages that are structured in a hierarchical fashion that use valid, uh, you know, valid kind of language and the, the CSS code. Um, pages that are compliant um, with web accessibility. Um, all of these sort of things go into making a website that 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 work and get into those. Uh, and there's also web content accessibility guidelines on the web itself. Okay, I really want to sum up shortly here. I want to tell you what a communications person would tell you if you asked him about how do you do local projects. And here we're talking about biologists and engineers. And the first thing that I've understood over time is that biologists and, and engineers think differently with respect to, to the, the differences, okay? So here are my lessons for biologists. Engineers don't think like you do, okay? Your engineering colleagues are invaluable. You have to work with them, otherwise nothing is going to get done. And you have to realize that funds for any mitigation are decided way up front. And you have to be in at the beginning up front if you're going to expect to be successful. Uh, so you work early in that process. Engineers, I've learned, appreciate standards. If you give them a standard, they can do it. But they need a standard. And compromise is usually necessary. Well, Having given lessons for biologists, and I'm a biologist, now I am going to venture into giving lessons for engineers. And I'm not an engineer, so I'm on tenuous ground now. But the first point is biologists don't think like you do. Okay? And I ask you to be patient with your biologist colleagues. They're working with complex, interactive, contingent feedback systems that are middle number systems. In other words, they're complex. They are difficult to understand. Uh, and often biologists don't have the hard answer. They have to give you their expert opinion. So standards for crossings are difficult because the animals that we design them for are not the same. So as a rule of thumb, at least in the United States and for larger animals, larger is better. And overpasses tend to be better than underpasses, at, at least for the larger that's not the case for some species that will use culprits solar vacuum tunnels. So here's my summary and take home the lesson here. Uh, if it was easy, it already would have been done. And it takes a good deal of hubris, as I mentioned at the beginning, for me to stand up here and, and give you a take home lesson from North America. From what I've seen here, you're very well along in the planning and the kind of things that you're doing that, that are tying in 
environmental services and parole services. So, so, so I do this with a great deal of humility. Uh, you want to find engineering solutions to these ecological problems. So I suggest that what you need is a collective vision of what you think the future should look like. And the speakers have already addressed that issue today. That's part of the plan. You need a long-term commitment to work together. You need the persistence to keep going when the going gets tough. And believe me, as you well know, the going gets tough. If there's one word, it's communication. And if there's another word, it's communication. And, and the third most important thing is communication. Okay. And finally, uh, I think you need an unlimited dose of tolerance for different views. That's the way that these problems get solved. They are systems level problems that take an enormous amount of work and commitment on the part of people to, to, to do these things. So I want to leave you with the idea that what we need are safe roads. There are not only ecological services, but there are human services, safety services. Engineers are concerned with safety by and large. Ecologists are concerned with wildlife or permeable landscapes. Okay. There are two things that need to be maximized here. So I want to thank you. I want to invite you. If you haven't been to Utah, I just want to give you some view of what the country looks like. Uh, it's a country that's so sort of shaped the way that I think. And 